Good evening. Welcome to our Ash Wednesday evening worship service. With this worship service, we begin the season of Lent, the 40 days before Easter, except for Sundays. The season of Lent is often thought of as a time of giving up something and a time of repentance. But the reason we give up something and repent is to help us remember what the season of Lent is all about. Lent is about preparing ourselves to receive God's grace. Through this worship service, I hope you will experience the presence of God in your life, and I hope you will be better prepared for the season of Lent. Would you join me in our call to worship, saying aloud where you see the cue for all. The grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord is merciful to all and hates nothing he has created. He is the Lord our God and is greatly to be praised. Let us pray. Almighty God and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect permission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, what a 
Savior. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. For he is Lord. Come to the altar. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you In our first reading, the prophet Joel points to the fact that works of repentance, if not related to the inner conversion with God in love, are worthless. Whatever has happened in your past, know that God is merciful and willing to forgive. A reading from the book of prophet Joel. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the age, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, o Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away our sins. And the Apostle Paul reminds us in his second letter to the Corinthians that forgiveness is available now to all who ask for it and that now is the acceptable time. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. He became sin. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Jesus, so amazing. Love so amazing and Jesus Messiah and name above all names and blessed from heaven 
and Jesus Messiah and Lord of all Jesus Messiah Jesus Messiah and Lord of all. The gospel message is similar to the Old Testament reading. External works of repentance have no value in themselves. We must relate them to the real repentance, our conversion to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and then at the street corners, so they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. The Word of the Lord. Tonight, we will use ashes to mark a cross on your foreheads. But have you ever thought about why we use ashes on Ash Wednesday? Ashes are nothing but what is left behind from burning something. It is the waste that the fire and heat leave behind. Around the Northwest, we're familiar with ashes. We burn wood in our fireplace, and when we go camping, we start a campfire and most of us are familiar with it. We like lighting the campfire. We like sitting around the campfire and roasting marshmallows. But how many of us have cleaned up after the campfire? If you have, you know it's a messy and unpleasant job. You have to make sure that the fire is completely out, and then you have to shovel the ashes into a bag and throw it away into a garbage can. So why tonight? Do we put this garbage on our foreheads? Where did this strange tradition come from, and what does it mean? First of all, the Bible tells us that the first humans were formed out of dust, that God took the dust and formed it and breathed life into it. The story reminds us that without the breath or the Spirit of God breathing into us, we would be lifeless. Ashes remind us of who we are, that we are nothing without God. Ashes also are a sign of repentance, that in life we need to repent and come clean with God. In the Bible times, it was common for people who were repenting to dress in sackcloth and put ashes all over their heads. People would come to God and sit before Him in sackcloth and ashes to show their repentance and to seek God's forgiveness. These ashes that we're going to use tonight are meant to remind us of a symbol of our repentance and a sign that we truly seek God and want to follow God in our lives. 
the people in the biblical times probably put ashes on the top of their heads and all over their bodies. So why do we, instead of putting ashes all over ourselves, just put a symbol of a cross on our foreheads? We do this because Paul reminds us that God places his seal on us and puts his spirit in our hearts as a pledge of what is to come. The mark of the cross is a mark of ownership. These ashes that we use tonight remind us that we belong to Jesus. So as you place ashes on your foreheads tonight, remember, repent of your self-reliance and self-seeking. Know that you are nothing without the breath and the Spirit of God being breathed into you and accept the grace and forgiveness that marks you as a redeemed child of God. Amen. Let us now in silence reflect upon the gospel message and make our confession and our vows of repentance and new life before the Lord. Lord, forgive our sins as we forgive those who trespass against us. We confess to you, O God, and to all our brothers and sisters that we have sinned through our own fault, in our thoughts and in our words, in what we have done and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. Lord, hear our prayer of repentance and bless us that we might walk in the newness of life Amen. Dear friends, in Christ, let us ask our God to bless these ashes, which we will use as a mark of our repentance. Lord, bless these ashes by which we show that we are dust. Pardon our sins and keep us faithful to the discipline of Lent. For you do not want sinners to die, but to live with the risen Christ. Almighty God, from the dust of the earth you have created us. May these ashes be for us again a sign of our mortality and repentance and a reminder that only by your gracious gift are we given eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. At this time, if you have received a bag of ashes from church, you are welcome to apply the ashes on your forehead or on each other's forehead and say these words. Remember, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Good evening, church. If you don't know me, my name is Boston Johnson, and I'm the director of Youth and Young Adult Ministries here at South Community Church. Please pray with me. Accomplish in us, O God, the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all of your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Hear these words addressed to the penitent believers. If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the sacrifice of atonement for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the world. Praise be to God for his grace and mercy. Amen. Thank you, Boston. My name is Esther Bullock, and I'm the Children's Ministry Director here at SCC. Please join me in sharing the peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Friends, now we come to the table. On this evening, when we reflect on our own mortality, we come to a place that offers us new life. As we gather and get ready to serve the Lord's Supper together, I want to invite you to go grab your bread and your juice if you do not have it right in front of you. For on the night that he was to be betrayed, Jesus gathered his disciples around and he took the bread and he broke it. 
And he said, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, following supper, Jesus took the cup. And he poured it out, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. The Apostle Paul will later add that as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the name of Jesus until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And we invite you to come and eat wherever you are. If you are home alone, feel free to hear that this is the body of Christ broken for you. If you're gathered with your family, go ahead and take the bread, let someone hold it, and rip off a piece and share that same sentiment with them. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And likewise, if you are alone, hear that this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And if you are gathered together, go ahead and offer the cup to one another, saying this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Because these are the gifts given to each one of us by a God who desires us to find life and to know that our life rests in him. Would you pray with me? Holy God, as we come to this table, we are aware that it is through nothing of our own, that it is only by your grace and forgiveness and love that we have been given a seat. So may we know just how loved we are And may we then go forth into this world as people who serve you with the same generosity and grace and kindness that you offer us. In Jesus' name, amen.
elders here at Seattle Community Church. Now, SCC family, please receive this blessing. My friends, may you grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. To God be the glory now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 